Take it a lot. And in certain, uh, mashallah, brothers, they may not know any other verse of the Quran, but they definitely know this verse of the Quran. Huh? Or they know another verse. There is another verse which a lot of brothers know. Men are superior unto women. It's a Quranic verse. I will tell you the application later. But when, when the brothers use it to their wives, every time they say, yeah, remember, Allah made me superior on you. They are misinterpreting, misquoting the verse of Quran, mistranslating the verse of Quran. But, because, but you know, they, don't, they only know, they may not know any other thing, but they know definitely this. And they will misuse this and exploit this for the, for, to, in, in, you know, in front of their wives. Why does not listen? You know the Prophet ﷺ, what he said about the women who don't listen? Any finnar, you are going to a hell. They know this hadith, they may not know any other hadith. They know this verse of Quran, they may not know any other verse of the Quran. So which means that even religion, what we do with religion, we, we pick and choose. We pick and choose. This is one of the reasons for the downfall of the Ummah. People pick and choose. They pick whatever is easy for them and they leave whatever is difficult. Allah said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O believers, Udkhulu fi silmi kafa. When you accept religion of Islam, and when you enter into the abode of Islam, kafa, you must enter completely. You must adopt it completely, the teachings. Not just take certain and leave certain out. So in regards to the marriage, for example, you know there is this rule. Men are allowed to marry for. One thing some people think, some people understanding of this verse is that it means Allah has told us that we must marry four wives. Some people think that in Islam a man has to marry four wives. And there are some, mashallah, very, very intelligent brothers and very intelligent in the sense of amazing intelligence. They say four marriages must, and you ask why? They say, because it's fulfilling the sunnah of the Prophet It's fulfilling the sunnah of the Prophet And I ask them, I ask them, the Prophet has so many sunnahs, so many sunnahs. Why do you only take one sunnah and you revive every other sunnah of the Prophet Why do you only remember this sunnah of the Prophet And this is such a sunnah that he did never tell his, his, his followers. You must also do this. He never said so. This is his personal life. He never said or he never initiated people to get more married than once. No, he never did so. Because his own reason for getting married more than one woman was hikmah, wisdom. He wanted to ele elevate the status of the women in the society. Those which were widows. Those which were deprived of every right in the society. Those, with which, those women which were slaves in the society, which normally such women at that time, they would be exploited by men, used as mistresses, used as prostitutes. The Prophet saw this, he, he, he elevated the status of the women. And he gave these kind of women, those which were widows, slaves, he gave them such recognition that all the people, the rich and the poor, had to accept them as the mothers. He married these wives. Some of them were 30 years, 20 years older than him. There was no other reason for him to get married with them. Except of this, that he wanted to elevate this. Because would he just say to the people, you must respect these. Then he would not have practiced it. But when he practiced it, he made sure that people now understand the thing. But there are other sunnahs of the Prophet ﷺ which he actually did initiate and he did suggest. For example, he said, in hadith he said that uh, one of my sunnahs and one of the reasons Allah created me is to complete and is to introduce human ethics, values, norms in the society. This is why you see I am born in the most ignorant society in the world. The Prophet was born in the most ignorant. This society is known as Ummiyin. Ummiyin. Allah says about the Arabs, the Arabs, Ummiyin. Why did he send the Prophet to the Arabs? Have you ever thought about that? 
Who has ever thought about this? Why did Allah send Muhammad Sallallahu to the Arabs? Raise your hands if you did. Why did he do so? Why he, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala was going to send the last and final messenger, the one which is going to lay down the final stone on that code of life, which is his religion, on code of life for humanity. He was going to teach them civilization. He was going to teach them the the great status and the great importance of human rights. Not only that, he was going to teach them animal rights. He was going to teach men to to become men, mankind, insan to become insan. Allah could have sent him to other civilizations. In fact, when he was born 1400 years ago, there were society civilizations in the world which were far exceeded in terms of philosophy, in terms of ethics. They had they were advanced, very advanced. The Roman civilization, the Greek civilization, Aristotle was he an Arab? He was not an Arab. Aristotle, he was Roman, Greek, Greek, they were Greek people, Roman civilization, Greek civilization. If the Allah wanted, he could have sent Muhammad Sallallahu to them. And they would have recognized him, appreciated him more than anybody else, more than the Arabs would have. They would have appreciated him. But the reason is, because Allah wanted to show. He wanted to show that my Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi if I send him among the Greek, among the uh, Persians, among the Romans, people can say his ethics, his values are influenced by those people. His teachings are influenced by those people. But no, let me send Muhammad Sallallahu in the most darkest ignorance nation in the world. Most ignorant. Allah himself calls them Ummiyyi. And he said, I could have sent my Muhammad Sallallahu to anywhere. Even the West Europe was in its dark ages, was in its ignorance. Yet, there was a nation which was far more in ignorance. There were Arabs. So, because they were the people who used to bury their daughters alive. They used to fornicate openly and they used to be praising their fornication. They used to praise their bad deeds. Hadr al-Aswad, the stone of the planet of Kaaba from Jannah. When it was revealed, when its inzal happened, Sayyidina Shu'ayb he narrates and Sayyidina Atta that it was white. They say, the Prophet ﷺ told us, it was white and it was shining. Noor, noor, light. Of light would eliminate the whole uh, atmosphere when the stone uh, Hajar al-Aswad would be somewhere. It was not Hajar al-Aswad. It was not black at that time. It was Hajar al-Abiyah. It was white. It, the stone itself, which is now black stone, used to be white when it came with Adam salam on the ground. But what happened, and it was so powerful, so powerful, that when blind people used to touch it, the stone, blind people, they were born as blind, because of the stone, Allah would give them shifa. And they would see that. But what happened, this Arab society, of Ibrahim salam, Ismail Ismail, after that, they left, they passed away, then the next 5,000 years, until the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is born. What happens is, humanity goes in the downfall in the downfall to such an extent that the same people who see all these miracles of the black stone what they do is when they are in the state of Janaba state of Janaba the men and women after having intercourse they would go in the state of Janaba and they would touch the stone of Adil Aswad they would so evil that they would slaughter animals and they would put the blood and the, the head of the animal they would rub it next to the stone Adil Aswad they would do in such degraded downfall that uh, the daughters were buried alive. The women, widows in the society, they became prostitutes and mistresses. That's it. Nothing else. And men, they could take any woman, leave her, and the same woman would then, the, had, she would be shared in the bed by the children of that man. Not the mother, but, but even a stepmother, you can say. This is the ignorance of, of, ignorance of that Arab society. Their ignorance is far more beyond the ignorance of Bani Israel. Bani Israel still had some values of Musa alayhi salam. They still had some values, ethics. But the Jews in Medina, they had some ethics, values. But Allah chose the most ignorant society, Arab society. Why? He said, because I am going to send that prophet. He is going to found, lay foundations of ethics, values. 
If I send them in any other nation, people will not understand his great status. Will not great understand his how he influenced mankind. Let me send him among this Arab nation. So he was sent there in that Arab nation. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam laid down the foundations of ethics. Laid down the fund. He gave women rights. Women. He gave animal rights. Animal rights. People talk about animal rights today. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu gave them animal rights 40 years and years ago. But it's a shame of Muslims that we as Muslims don't know about it. We as Muslims today are the most people with the less ethics, less values. People who cheat the most, who deceive the most, who backbite the most, who lie the most. Who are they? You go and you see a lot of Muslims are unfortunately in this sin. A lot of Muslims. And you see the Western people, they don't have Iman. They don't have the beauty of Iman. But they have adopted ethics values. Where did they get these values from? Ethics from? They got them all from Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All the philosophers of the West, all the orientalists of the West, they have all appreciated and they have recognized that the West was enlightened by the Muslim civilization. Muslim Islamic civilization. It, it, they, it was enlightened through them. But the same civilization which enlightened them, the followers of that civilization, members of that civilization, they are now in this state. The Quran says, Azillatin al mu'minin, there will be a time. Mu'min, mu'minin, believers will be Galeel. Aizzatin al kuffar and the disbelievers will be respected. This is Quran. Ya yuhalladina amanu, may yarqadda minkum al dini. And the Quran says the reason, why will that happen? Why will such a time come when the Muslims will be disrespected and the and the non-Muslims will be respected in the world. Why will this happen? Quran says, O oh believers, When you people are going to turn away from your religion, then it will happen. What is our religion? Well, it's not just praying, brothers. It's not just fasting. It's not just praying zakat. Because if it's just hajj, then every year the people in hajj, they increase. 2 million, 2 and a half million, 3 million, people increase. If it is fasting, Alhamdulillah, majority of the Muslim Ummah in Ramadan, they fast. If it is praying, people may not pray a lot five times a day, but Muslims still compared with other religions, they are, Alhamdulillah, very, very far in terms of praying. Why is it then? Is it because Muslims don't go to the mosque? No. Youth people, youngsters, children all come to the mosque. Churches are empty on Sundays. Only elderly people go there. And I am many times asked and questioned by priests and fathers, do you have shaykh, do you have also the problem which we have, are facing in churches? And I look at them and say, which problem? They say, the problem that the youth doesn't come to the, to the church anymore. Children don't come. I said, alhamdulillah, we don't have that problem. But then I think in myself, we have other major problems. What is our major problem? We have, we have, we have left our deen. What is our deen? Deen is not just praying, fasting, Ramadan. Deen, most importantly, is ethics. It's akhlaq. It's mu'amalat. The way you deal with your wife is deen. The way you deal with a with, with, with wife, with your children, with your neighbor, with everybody. This is deen. This is deen. This is deen. Sayyidina Jibreel came to the Prophet wasallam, And you know, and he, he asked certain questions. And then he went, and this hadith is hadith of Ibrahim, very beautiful hadith. And he asked certain questions, and the third question was on ethics, values. And then when he went, Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this was Jibrail. Why did he come here? You alim deenukum. So that he may teach you your deen. Deen is not just praying, it's also ethics, values. And lastly, what, this is very important. One of the reasons why people became Muslim in the, in the beginning, in the time of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it was not because they were they were surprised by the amount of people doing the Hajj Hajj didn't even start yet it was not because they were they found out about the benefits of praying this is not only